After the critical and commercial success of Vector Man on Sega Genesis, a sequel would be released also on the Genesis the following year in 1996, being one of the last games published by Sega Games. Vector Man 2 follows the formula of the original. It's the same kind of run and gun platformer where you can acquire power ups to temporarily enhance your gun or morph into alternate forms and blast a whole bunch of shit up. It was built on the same engine as the original, and there aren't any major changes to the gameplay at all, just some very minor tweaks, so the familiarity is very much prevalent. In fact, it feels more like an extension or a continuation of Vector Man 1. Not that there's anything wrong with that necessarily, Mega Man sequels often offered little innovation, but they were still great games. There are new morphs, new enemies, and more stages than the original, but all of these additions come with a caveat. Virtually all the morphs from the original have been taken out of the game, and it seems like there are less of them in general this time around, not counting the stages where you're in a different form by default. While the enemies are entirely new too, they're not quite as interesting. In the first game, they were all robotic or mechanical in some variety, whereas here they're all mutated insects, which is fine, and it supports the game's story, but the enemies tend to have plain attack patterns or are generic by design, and there's not quite as much variety. And while there are more levels, 22 this time instead of 16, a pretty good chunk of them are either short mini stages, a boss battle and nothing else, or a repeated concept from earlier in the game. So the quantity is increased, but the quality is roughly the same. Plot wise, it's very similar too. In the first game, Vector Man had just taken care of some business and then had to save Earth from a robotic attack. And now here, Vector Man has just taken care of some business, namely saving the planet in the first game, and then has to stop a mutant insect infestation from spreading. So back when I said that the game felt like a continuation, well in the plot, that's literally the case. But all that being said, there is still a lot to enjoy about Vector Man 2. It's not exactly too ambitious to go with the whole if it ain't broke don't fix it mentality, but at the end of the day, you've got strong gameplay, a strong soundtrack, and even with some of the levels being visually repetitive, there's still a lot of variety in the ones that are unique from the flock. There's also some fun little arcade style bonus levels sprinkled in there if you collected enough items in a given stage. Also, there was a contest where fans could submit their own Vector Man morphs, and a winner would be announced and included in the game. The winner was Josh Krebs, and his name and morph design was shown in the options menu, but for some reason or another, possibly due to time constraints, the morph wasn't used in the game. At the end of the day, it's still a very solid game, especially when you take into account the fact that the game's development was rushed to get the game released while the Genesis was still breathing as this was pretty late in the Genesis lifespan. Because of this, and on top of the fact that the original lead programmer wasn't available, it would not have been practical to reinvent the wheel here. Vector Man 2 flew a bit under the radar, and unfortunately this would be the last game in the series, even though there was a sequel planned on several occasions, but they were all scrapped for one reason or another, which is a goddamn shame because I think Vector Man would have thrived in the 3D era. Vector Man 2 didn't evolve the series too much, but if you liked the first game, you should enjoy this one too. So the game starts out with a cutscene of Vector Man flying his ship back after completing his mission from the last game. He's jamming out to some tunes, celebrating the victory, when his ship gets blasted with a missile and he has to abandon it. The first level, or scene as they're referred to in this game, called Geronimo, is entirely made up of Vector Man in a parachuting morph on his way down to land. It's very short, just follow the photon trail, collect them, and blast all the flying insects along the way. They'll approach from below, so just fire downward constantly and adjust accordingly if they shift out of your way. You'll be on the ground in no time, and it's on to scene two, Night in the Swamp. There's an upper path and a lower path throughout most of the stage. You'll start on the upper path, and if you stay on the ground, you'll fall through this trap door that'll send you down, which is where you'll want to be, because there are a lot more power-ups down here, although it is a tighter space. After dropping down, head left, blast the shit out of the snail when he faces you, and jump over his projectiles when he fires them, and hop up here to blast the power sack for a laser power-up, 
Oh yeah, these power sacks replace the monitors from the last game as your source for power-ups and items. Keep going and blast this sack for a clock, and watch the ceiling for these pricks called ceiling crawlers that spit crap down on you. Blast them from an angle. When you get to the end, hop on this platform and head into this nook for a power sack that gives you a laser shot. Jump when the platform goes up so you can reach the surface again, blast the grubs that just hop around, and when you get to the end, it seems like there's nowhere to go, but if you head back a bit, you'll drop down. Continue on, and then head left for a power sack for an overkill that lets you wipe out all enemies on the screen with one shot, which you can use on this ceiling crawler snail combo. When you get all the way to the left, hop on these mushrooms, kill the ceiling crawlers, and blast the power sack for a clock. And then up here, there's another one with health. Hop up onto this tight space and blast the wall that'll lead you to a 1-up. Go back to where you originally took the left and keep going right. Blast this sack for health and then take the moving platform up and you'll finish the stage. And move on to scene 3, Bog Jam. Head left a bit to grab some photons in this power sack. And then right after that is a 2 times multiplier in this one. The multipliers will increase your points health, power-ups, or extra lives by whatever number the multiplier is. Although the multiplier only lasts for a limited time. Hop up the tree where you just got that multiplier, and there's another power sack here for an energy shot, which gives you some sweet beam shots. Watch out for these paint ball bugs. They'll fly down at you from an angle and shoot you with paint, which besides hurting you, turns you into a different color, although that doesn't seem to make a difference. Just be ready to shoot up diagonally quite a bit to ward these pesky fucks off. Now head across this long branch to the right, jump up these branches, and do a long jump to the left. And keep scaling up to a power sack with some help. Then head back right again as you continue to move vertically up the trees, and continue this pattern of bouncing from left to right as high as you can go, and you'll come across these bats along the way that shield themselves up with their wings, and then launch projectiles but they're vulnerable in this state, so fire away. Grab the DNA ball that these assholes drop, and you'll get a shield ability from it for a short period of time. So hurry along, scale your way up the next tree, and you'll reach the end of the stage shortly thereafter. Scene 4, in the Blackest Night, is entirely a boss battle against this two-headed monstrosity. It will shift its position all over the screen, and send a fireball your way every now and then. It can't hurt you by making contact with it, so don't be afraid to move around a lot, because you'll want to keep your distance so you can react to its attacks. Keep blasting until you take out each of the heads, and it's on to scene 5, Fire. Drop down off the ledge here, but don't get this power sack yet. First head down, and back up this way to get some more photons. Then drop down for the power sack, because you'll get an overkill. Hang on to it as you traverse across this platform that takes you over the lava, and use the overkill once the scorpion appears. Grab the DNA ball, and now you morph into a scorpion where you can use your stinger like a whip, and more importantly, walk across the lava without getting hurt. Grab the two power sacks here. The first one is a three-time multiplier, and the other is an energy shot. Take the platforms across the lava, and hop over the scorpion so you have some room and don't get smashed with the stinger. Blast him to hell, and grab the scorpion morph once again. Make your way across the lava, and climb up here for another scorpion you'll want to take out. Grab the morph, head across the lava, and you'll reach the end of the stage. Scene 6 is Magma P.I. Start off taking out the power sack behind you for a pulse weapon, which is a more powerful version of your regular attacks. Hop across the lava, quickly kill the paintball bugs, and hop up these rocks for a power sack, giving you the super energy shot, which is like the regular energy shot beams, but on steroids. Continue scaling your way up, hop across this lava fall, and jump up to shoot down this flying flea before scaling up the rocks to move on. Jump over the next fall for a power sack that has a milestone or a checkpoint. Then slip down these rocks down the fall, head left, take out the bat for a shield power up, and shoot the power sack for a 5 time multiplier. Now head right back to where you came, and you'll reach a power sack with a 1 up, which will give you 5 lives, so long as the multiplier hasn't run out of time. Jump and blast downward to take out the rocks blocking your path down to the end of the stage. 
Scene 7, turn up the heat, is a boss battle with this fire monster. He'll emerge from one of two lava pits with safe platforms on either side plus the middle. He'll walk slowly in your direction and toss fireballs, which can go straight at you or in an upward trajectory. Get on the opposite side of where he emerges from, do short jumps to avoid the fireballs, and blast away. When he gets close, do a double jump to the other side, pulling off the second jump while you're on your descent so you make it all the way across without hitting any lava, and then go back to shooting. When you do jump, wait until right after he throws the fireball so you don't get smashed on your way over. After enough shots, you'll take him out, and it's on to scene 8, Orbar Express. In this stage, you're on skates the whole time, and the only enemy you'll encounter are the snake flies that annoyingly attack you from overhead, but they do make an equally annoying noise that warns you of their presence. Don't run, cause you'll move too fast to see the snake flies coming, and you'll run right into them. Slowly glide your way across instead, and fire at an upward angle to take these pricks down. When you get to the bottom of the hill, Double jump your way up to this little tunnel, and skip the first two power sacks, cause the last one is a 3 times multiplier. Go back after grabbing it to get health, and a 1 up from the other two to triple these. Go back down, repeat the slow going process along the way, get health from the power sack, and before you know it, you'll reach the end, and it's on to C9, dirty job. Shoot the larva on the wall, and you're at a dead end already. Shoot your way downward to blast through the rocks, and watch the larva shooting from either side when you hit the clearing. Head right, shoot the power sack for photons, and then blast your way up, and use the small pipes as platforms to get up once you clear the way. When you get to the top, blast all the way to the right for a power sack with a 1-up, then blast your way downward, grab the photons in the area, and fire through the rocks on the right hand side to clear a path to the opening between the pipes to the end of the stage. Scene 10, called Vector Man 123, is on skates just like scene 8. And much like that stage, it's filled to the brim with the fucking snake flies. Implement the same strategy as last time, slowly gliding your way through and blasting the snake flies from below. When you drop down the hill, head left and grab the photons from this power sack, then go back where you came from and wipe out this power sack for a 1-up, and shortly after that is the end of the stage. Scene 11 is I Can Dig It, and as you might have expected, it's another digging stage. It seems we're alternating the themes at this point of the game. You can get to the end really quick by simply digging through the right side and make your way to the upper right where you'll get two power sacks, one with photons, the other with a one-up, and the end is right after that, easy peasy. But you can also dig straight downward from the very beginning between these pipes, head right, and this power sack reveals a 10 times multiplier, which if you hop to and make your way to the northeast corner of the room as fast as possible from here and get to those power sacks before the multiplier runs out, you'll get 10 extra lives. Scene 12 is Roller Derby, and it's the last in the Rollerblading Trilogy. Same as before, slowly escape by, shoot the snake flies, and when you take the long drop, go left, and you'll reach a power sack with a 5 time multiplier. Now go back right, but ditch the take your time strategy because you want to use this multiplier and time is of the essence. You'll go up a few hills, and back down again. On the way down, jump up here to get into this passage, and at the bottom of the next hill going up, jump up and left for a few power sacks. The one on the end has a 1-up, so go for this one first to get the 5 extra lives, and you'll also get some health and photons in the others. Go back down and continue right, get the power sack of health at the end, then back your way out of the passage and continue on ground level until you get to the end of the stage, and it's on to scene 13, Missed the Chances. Early on, you'll run into these little pests called Big Maws, who unhinge the top of their bodies and try to bite at you. But if you unload on them rapidly, they won't be able to do anything. Hop up here and blast these rocks away, which lead to a power sack of photons. Go back out and hop up these platforms to the level above, head left a bit to get this milestone in the sack up here, then go back right and you'll meet the giant ticks who throw punches at you, cause yeah, that's what ticks are known for. He takes a few shots, but keep your distance, take him out, and grab the DNA ball to get the punch ability. 
punch out the mole who digs underground and tries to surprise you, but surprise him with a punch to the fucking face. Then go back and punch out the sack for the health. Head up this way, punch out the sack for the five time multiplier, take out the snail from underneath, and then get a clock in this power sack before blasting the rocks underneath to go back below where you came from. Go back to where you got that milestone, slip up here, and kill the tick. You might have to jump over him to give yourself enough distance. Grab the tick punch ball, punch out everything in front of you, and head up these platforms and get the 10 time multiplier up here. Break through these rocks for a power sack of health, and do a double jump over the drop up ahead and you'll reach the end of the stage. Scene 14 is Cave Fear. Head left to break the rocks to get power sack with a 3 time multiplier in it. Drop down and head this way through the breakable rocks for a 1 up in this power sack so you'll get 3 extra lives. Drop down again, hop across here and blast through the rocks for a power sack with some health and then continue blasting down to get back on the beaten path. Shoot down these snails, grab the milestone in the next power sack. Hop up here and blast through the rocks along the way to get through. Blast these rocks on the ceiling to get into this little nook for a sack of photons. Drop down and then head up these platforms that lead you to a power sack of health. Hop up the platforms on the other side and you'll encounter the rhino beetle who charges at you. Blast away at him and you'll get the DNA ball that gives you the rhino more, letting you charge through shit, like these snails that get in your way. Hit the power sack up here for a milestone, and you'll meet up with a pair of rhino beetles. Get some distance, kill one of them to get another rhino morph, and charge through the other beetle, plus the snails and other shit along your way. There'll be another pair of rhino beetles up ahead, jump and shoot from the platform below, or hop up on here if there's room to kill one and get the rhino morph again. Charge your way through the rest of the way, drop down and head right for the exit of the stage. Scene 15, Dream Snake is another boss battle, this time a pair of snakes that breathe fire. They'll stay in one spot, but then burrow into the ground and pop up in a random spot. Get to the wall on either side, and when they pop up, fire at their heads as rapidly as you can, and double jump over to the opposite side once they breathe their fire. Continue to hit and run on them until they're both dead, you have to kill them each individually, and you're on to scene 16, Recycle or Die. Head right, blast these pricks from underneath so you can scale the moving platform easier, and snag some photons from the power sack. Now this stage can be really short if you want it to be. You can hop over this opening, blast the wall, and keep heading right, where you'll blast some more bugs and snag some more photons from a few power sacks, and after blasting through this wall and heading up here, bam, you're at the end. But if you're willing to risk some health and lives for an extra hit point, instead slip down this opening right after that first power sack and head left, hopping across these moving platforms along the way, being sure not to fall into the acid. It's not instant death, but it sucks. At the end of the line is a health ball that increases your max health in the power sack. Then head up this way and you'll encounter the fire ant, who takes a few shots to kill, but you'll get his DNA ball and it lets you shoot a powerful fire attack. Head up here and you'll be in the area you originally came, and you can head to the exit from here. Scene 17 is the Shadow Nose. This is a short digging stage with a boss battle right after, where you have to shoot through all these rocks and vertically scale the platforms. When you get to the top, there'll be a power sack you can use to grab some health, and then it's on to the boss fight. He hides behind this wavy, trippy pattern before merging and gliding back and forth while spitting projectiles at you. Then goes back to the trippy wave and starts a different attack, this time lunging towards you before retracting back, hiding behind the trippy wave, this time going back to the lunge attack, and then it's back to the original loop. Head in the opposite direction he is when he's doing his spitting attack, and run back and forth to minimize getting hit while getting the occasional shots in. When he does the lunge, fire at him a few times, and just before he lunges, run away to lure him where you were, and then get a few more shots in. Remember that he'll perform the lunge after the second time the wave pulls its way back in. It'll require some patience, but keep this up until he's dead, and it's on to scene 18, Shout and Twist, a play on the final stage of the last game.
And like the previously mentioned stage, there's a tornado will blow it. But this time it's in the background and it's pushing you back. So it's kind of the antithesis of the skating levels. Shoot the first power sack you see for the tornado power up. This lets you rip shit up without taking damage. You'll tear through these walls in tornado mode, and there's another one right after in this power sack. Rip through the next wall and get the sack of photons next. Hop up here, bang a right when you get up here, and grab another tornado morph in this power sack. Hop on this platform to take a right over here, get the milestone in this power sack, drop down, grab the two time multiplier in this sack, and then scale your way up here until you get to these two power sacks. You'll get a laser beam on the left and some health on the right. Fall down this long drop, blast all these ceiling dickheads with your beam, and grab a health ball in this power sack. And then left for a sack of clock. Keep going left, and there'll be a tornado morph in this sack. You'll be able to clear the nearby enemies, but your limited jump range in this state means you'll have to wait until it wears off before you can get up here. Blast through these rocks to get up here, follow the linear path, hop over this opening, and then take this long drop. Follow the linear path up here, take this little opening up here, and you'll get a health max increase. Keep going in the same direction you were heading, and the exit is right after. Scene 19 is Tank You, where you're in a tank morph throughout the whole stage, and the controls are a little different here no matter what you have selected in the options. B will always be shoot, C is jump, and A is to rotate the turret from left to right. Personally, I've always found this to be awkward even after getting used to it. I would have much rather just let the turret always face the direction that I'm facing, but what are you going to do? The D-pad can also shift the angle of the turret, so do this early to hit the paintball bugs from overhead. Blast through the wall, take this elevator up, jump over this gap and shoot more of the paintball bugs. Slip down here, bust through the walls, and don't bother shooting up through here. It's just photons in this sack and you don't need to deal with this prick just to get them. Ride up the platform and shoot down the bugs in the nooks in front of you on your way up. Follow the linear path and grab the milestone in this power sack. Follow the linear path blasting everything in sight, and just before the end, blast this bug from down here and hop up to get the one up in the power sack before heading back down to the exit just below. So now that the tank stage is done, it's on to scene 20. Ah shit, it's another tank stage. Tank patrol in this case. Blast these first two power sacks for some health and photons, and be sure to watch out for these green pools of acid or whatever the fuck it is. It does damage, and that's all you need to know. Kill all the motherfuckers in your way, grab the milestone from the power sack up here, and then watch out for this barrage of acid pits. Make sure you jump between them as you fire at all the flying crap. Keep wiping out everything in your path as you exit the stage and move on to scene 21, Bad Eggs. This level is made up entirely of big green eggs that bounce your way. If you wipe them out, a random enemy from earlier in the game will emerge. So it's really just a matter of whether you want to avoid the eggs, or take on whatever happens to be inside them. Sometimes you'll get an enemy that will leave behind a DNA morph, so that's cool. Head through the linear path, scaling the platforms to get up to the next level, and you'll soon reach the end, and move on to the final scene, Queen for a Day. The queen stays in one spot, firing off projectiles from one side to the other, while two platforms move vertically on either side. Weakness is her exposed brain, and it doesn't seem like you can hit her from down below, but when you're at the far corners of the room, you can. You can also use the platforms, but it's hard to get up there. She'll swat you off if you're level with her, so you have to do a double jump and land on it when it's closer to the top. Then you'll have to take your shots when the platform is on its way down, and then do a double jump straight up once you're level with her so you don't get knocked back down again. It's a very tedious process, but it can get the job done. Also, the left platform gets wiped out after you get enough hits in, so you might have to switch platforms. And then once you get another batch of hits in and you've almost finished her off, the other platform gets wiped out and you have to take her out from the floor. But on the other hand, it's just much easier and quicker to do it from the floor anyway. Just stand on the far end, run across while firing, and although she'll keep sending projectiles your way, as long as you're moving quickly, you'll always be a step ahead of her, and you shouldn't get hit. Keep this going until she's dead, you've saved the planet once again, 
and the credits roll. So that's it for Vector Man 2, and that wraps up the series as well, as there haven't been any more Vector Man games as of this time. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.